Hey, uh, I'm Andy. Um, I'm one of the founders of a company called Content Cal, which we founded in 2016. And over the course of five years, grew it predominantly through organic social channels. And at the end of December in 21, uh, the magical thing happened where we were acquired by Adobe, which is where I now work. Uh, my talk is all about how we can use social media data to impact our results and not just look at social media data through the lens of improving our social media results, but actually looking at how it impacts a broader business strategy and how we can use it to underpin overall marketing growth. If there's anything I've learned throughout the journey of, of building a company is that social media is not a channel, it's a business strategy. It really sits at the core of how you build a product because nothing helps you yield like the understanding of an audience at scale and build a community and build a following at scale. So um, this, I often end up on my soapbox talking about this kind of stuff, talking to CMOs about like, why social is still chronically misunderstood across the marketing industry, critically undervalued. So even though I'm talking about social media stuff, where we'll end up is really talking about how this implement, implements or impacts a broader business strategy. Anyway, cool. Let's start with some first principles because social media seems complex. Changes happen all the time and sometimes it seems overwhelming. Social media is not that overwhelming. In fact, we, where are you? We were having a good chat about threads. Hands up, who was I? Hello. Molly, um, yeah, good chat, but and it just goes to show, we had like a 15 minute chat just about meta threads, and it just goes to show there is so much complexity, so many platforms and changes, but there's actually six rules that never change, and I'm a big fan of, anyone heard of first principles thinking? Cool, wonderful, one person, two people in the room. Great, not that popular it turns out. So, um, either way, first principles thinking is about distilling complex subjects into the most simple, basic, non-changing rules. And once you understand the rules of the game, games are always a little easier to play when you understand the underlying principles that govern them. So let's talk about these. What are the things that are never changing in the world of social? Growing word of mouth is our ultimate ambition. Word of mouth has and always will be, as we all know as marketers in the room, the best marketing channel, right? Bar none. So social media gives us an opportunity to build word of mouth at scale. And for what we saw within our days of building Content Cal, that was the thing that really set us apart. Understanding how communities talk about a business and how referral and virality builds at a grassroots level. Collaboration increases opportunity. The more people you can work with, and oftentimes this is a massively misunderstood element of social, Think beyond your feeds. It's much more important about what other people are saying about you than what you're saying, because that's the thing that carries the weight. So the more people you can work with as part of your content strategy, the stronger you'll be. In fact, Joe was one of our early partners and it was one of the most successful things we ever did. Participation increases engagement, obvious statement, but the more we involve other people in our content, asking questions and encouraging interaction on our content, it will drive engagement. The single rule across all social platforms, we talk about, oh, algorithms are shifting and changed. Yes, they do, we can't control that, but the underlying principle of all social platforms is all about engagement, maximizing time and interaction on a site. So as long as we are driving engagement on our content, we will drive reach. And reach is what we want to build to drive awareness. And because we go to point number six, and Joe, you've spoken about this before, because you know, the best product in most people's eyes is the one that we know. Our job as marketers is to maximize mental availability. The one who gets remembered gets bought. So we simply need to be in as many places, it sounds really simple, doesn't it? Simply need to be in as many places as possible. But honestly, that is where understanding your audience intrinsically, being in the communities that your audience spend the most time in, honestly, this is the, I wish I could just tell everyone this because we didn't, we're a tiny business. We were three people in a garage in Reading building this business that became one of the fastest growing companies in the social media technology space. It's only because we intrinsically understood who we're trying to serve and spent all of that time in all of the communities or the Reddit threads, the Discord groups, the Facebook groups, the live meetups that all of that, our target audience hang out in. And suddenly everyone's like, oh, you seem massive. Of course we see massive because everyone in your social circle talks about us. 
and it just goes to show when you're trying to get everything at scale, it doesn't work. Hootsuite had that covered. So when you go super niche, you understand your audience, then you can serve them better. Does that make sense? Yeah, cool. Nice. Right, let's talk about some social media trends. I'm going to fly through some of this stuff, uh, but unsurprisingly, social media is growing. 59.4% of the world's population actively use social media every single month. It's pretty big. And that's growing still. It's not, well, it's actually shrinking in terms of its growth rate because we're pretty much at maximum penetration because nearly everyone who has access to the internet worldwide actively uses social. There has never been anything that connects us like this. And like most technologies, there is a very big head and a long tail. So naturally, distribution is focused on the top platform. Sorry, I keep on standing in the way. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, very focused on the top platforms. But honestly, what we're seeing increasingly, because we were talking about this earlier, Molly, about like there is, there is increasing fragmentation across social. More people are spending more time on more platforms. In fact, the average user is across about seven different platforms right now. And this slide is really small. I'm sure we can share these slides, Joe. Sorry, this is like the most, this is one of my favorite slides, and it is also the smallest. It's a horrible looking slide, so I massively apologize. This is all about social media platform overlaps. And I think sometimes we, uh, we don't focus on this enough when we think about building our social strategy. In fact, less than 1% of so all social media users, that 4.74 billion, less than 1% of those are unique to a platform. People are across multiple. It's our job to increase our distribution. Now, I'm still a big fan of focusing and majoring on one. Joe is a fantastic example. I'm sure we all follow Joe on LinkedIn. But like, take, take Joe as an example, right? Because if you look at, at LinkedIn, for example, you'll also see that across LinkedIn, you'll notice that 82% of LinkedIn users are also using Instagram. 52% of them are also on TikTok. So really, if we want to reach our audience, which primarily might be on LinkedIn for, for our cases, we really need to think about how we maximize distribution. How do we take our content and repurpose it to different platforms? Because honestly, focusing on one platform will not give us the reach we need. And we're going to speak about that in more detail in a second. Some other shifting consumption habits. Uh, video consumption increasing on social month on month, rose another 8% in the last year. Instagram's driving that heavily. In fact, I know we've all been forced to it's all about Instagram Reels, we all know this, but in fact, that strategy is paying off and it is starting to make headway against um, TikTok. So more and more users starting to spend more time on the platform consuming video. So don't expect that whole kind of push, that Instagram focus on short form video to go away anytime soon. Something else I, I really enjoy watching this trend, even though kind of social media growth is plateauing, what we're seeing is shifting consumption habits. So baby boomers are now spending more time on social than, uh, than other cohorts. And in fact, they're the fastest growing segment. So this is the over 50s, fastest growing segment in terms of time spent on the platform. So not only are we seeing mass distribution where we've got 60% basically of the world's population using social, we're also seeing that increasingly across demographics, people are spending more time on platforms. Anyway, so um, social, uh, this is a trend I pay a lot of attention to, how social is beginning to fuel brand discovery. And it's starting, well, it's now overtaken search in terms of where brand discovery happens. Increasingly, more users are turning to social first ahead of Google search. For obvious reasons, right? Because trust is at an all-time low. We know that just because they've, people have the ability to do SEO well. And we're so used to seeing like spam at the top of Google, seeing, finding it really hard to get to the right information. So increasingly, people are going to their own communities first, searching, because search on social is really starting to, to take off. More people on TikTok particularly are using search and discovering stuff in the For You feed. So how we optimize our content for search in social is super important. More and more people going there first to try and understand and get inspiration around products. So the impact that social is having in terms of brand discovery, super meaningful right now. So they are some macro shifts and there's some kind of those, those are the big numbers. So let's look now at kind of four ways that we can use some kind of more tactical numbers to impact our strategy. And this and this kind of second part of this, this presentation, so now we understand that the macro stuff, let's now talk about like, what are the things that tactically we can apply uh, to our strategy? Now, it's worthwhile saying here at this point, like some of this is from my own data, some of it is from other companies' data, but uh, I'll be the first to say like, you 
should use your own ink inquisition. You should be curious. You should use your own data to, to drive this as well. So there is no such thing as a social media expert, right? You know, lots of people will purport to be one, but it's the only industry you can go to bed an expert and wake up a novice because it changes that darn quickly. So I'm not going to be the one to sit in front of you and say, you need to do this. Here is some data that suggests some ways that you might approach things. But honestly, take this you know, as you see fit, right? I'm never going to be the one to say, this is the only way of doing stuff. So many ways to succeed on social. But either way, these are very common questions. So let's, let's address them because some of them are very interesting. Cool. Strongest for reach. And now I'm talking only organically right now. And this is based on uh, my own experiments. So feel free to kind of maybe take something from this. You might want to experiment with this yourself. Basically, I produce the same content every, every Tuesday. I produce the same video and I have done the same thing for five years. So it's given me a really good understanding of how content performs across different platforms. And going back to that slide that I showed you earlier about like platform overlaps, I'm always interested about how can we take the same content published to exactly the same platform, no changes whatsoever. So short form video is what it typically is. So under 90 seconds, a vertical video, same copy published to exactly the same platform, um, or exact same content to different platforms and all organically, not boosted, etc. So as you can see, my followers vary across different platforms. So some of them I should probably be embarrassed about, but hey, never mind. Um, <laughs> but there we go. It's always like someone talking about social media, you see the followers, like 236, like, really? Really? Can, are you talking to me about social media? But anyway, here, I'm just here to provide information. Let's look at TikTok first, because TikTok has been super strong organically for, for reach, as well we know, and it continues to be so. So here I'm kind of measuring this by view rate. So that is the percentage of people that watch that video and complete that video out of the number of followers. Simple calculation, right? And here, what I'm trying to understand is what are the platforms that are going to give us best bang for buck? Where is the underpriced attention, as we often call it? So here, TikTok, still quite strong, but actually the worst out of all of those. LinkedIn, worthwhile saying this is a personal profile, right? Personal profiles, as we know, perform better than company pages. Insta, Reels, they are performing very well, but not as well as Facebook. Now, the caveat here, and this is something that is definitely worthy of experimentation. I only started testing this because some other creators were saying, honestly, Facebook personal profiles that have been switched to professional mode because Facebook are investing heavily in creators and they really want to push this heavily. In the same way that LinkedIn started to prioritize your personal profile, and encourage people to switch to creator mode. It's a war for creators, it's a war for talent. And the way to win that war, as far as the networks are concerned, is to give you distribution, right? It's to maximize underpriced attention. So Facebook is doing incredible things for reach at the moment. Now, reach is not everything, we'll come back to that, because naturally, if you're reaching a load of people that are irrelevant, it doesn't really matter. So we're just gonna take this single data point in isolation, let's look at where organic reach is, and yeah, interesting, you'll see this in some other data. It kind of supports those findings as well. So fascinating. So there's, there's your reach. Let's look at engagement as well. So what does some of this data say? I'll kind of explain what's on these slides. Unsurprisingly, um, TikTok continues to lead for engagement rates. So engagement rates are the percentage of people that engage in your content. So like, comment, say, basically take some form of interaction, click a link, whatever it is, any form of interaction. The percentage of people that take an interaction out of your followers, that's, that's how you get your engagement rate. And we want that because naturally, you know, engagement is a wonderful cycle. As we looked at in those kind of six golden rules, engagement drives reach. The more people interact with your content, the further it will go. Simple as that. And it applies to all networks. So you'll notice that TikTok is so much higher um, when you look across uh, the whole broad spectrum than the other networks. So incredibly strong. But also LinkedIn personal profiles, fantastic for engagement too. Joe and I were talking about this earlier, I think last week actually. There's a lot of fluctuation happening on LinkedIn, so won't get too deep into that because it seems to be changing all the time. But even, even despite that, engagement still seems to be really strong, particularly for those uh, with less than 10,000 followers. So because Joe is a baller, maybe that's why you've been seeing some of your uh, changes there. So maybe you should hand, hand out some of your followers to everyone else in this room and then we'll be fine. Anyway, so, um, so we looked at reach, we looked at engagement, and let's look at like formats, right? Unsurprisingly, what format gets the most engagement? Hands up, let's have a prediction. Video. 
Yay! Who'd have thunk it? Cool. Other, other things. So there are some other elements to that too, but unsurprisingly, Reels trumps everything on, uh, on Instagram, for example. Carousels still do marginally, marginally well, but honestly, as much as we hate it, as much as like the campaign last year of make Instagram great again, it's not going to change anything. That, that ship has sailed and it's all about Instagram only cares about maximizing people's time on the platform. Currently, people spend 10x the amount of time on TikTok than they do on Instagram. That is a big, big problem for anyone's business. So naturally, they're going to do everything to make people spend time on platform. And video is the number one to do, way to do that. But something else that is, that is the most awful still and screenshot of me. <laughs> Good Lord, I need to change that. Anyway, um, you change your view on handsome man now, don't you? Um, anyway, so collabor uh, tagging collaborators in posts has been so powerful. And in fact, Instagram just rolled out the ability to tag three collaborators in post last week. And like I said, like in the second one of those kind of six golden rules of social, collaboration increases opportunity. The more people you can work with, the better. And again, thinking beyond your feed. The power of collab posts means that whoever you've tagged and provided they've kind of accepted the fact you're collaborating with them, it all goes in their feed. So you go into four feeds rather than one. So it's so important, the amount of people you work with. Honestly, like, that is the number one rule of social um, as a brand, particularly, in, honestly, my, I work in a B2B context. So who, actually, show of hands, who's in B2B here? Oh, majority, right, okay, cool, good. We're talking the same language. So in a B2B context, um, finding people that you can work with, finding people you can collaborate with, honestly, will change the game and I would spend more time focusing on the people you work with than the content that you'd be creating. Honestly, that's, that's where our focus went. There's a war for short form video stuff. So I appreciate all of this is short form video, but you rightly predicted that. Um, Real slightly wins for watch rate at the moment. So you'll see that kind of backed up in my own example. So you'll see this, this is a study across 250,000 accounts. So kind of this is definitely a little more statistically significant than you know, my example earlier, but it's good to see it being backed up. So you'll notice that Reels fantastic for view rates. Um, shorts isn't quite on par with the others. So YouTube Shorts isn't quite on par with the others for view rates. I'm disappointed about that because I have good hopes for, for YouTube Shorts because two and a half billion monthly active users, YouTube should be really strong. Engagement rate of Shorts is going up though. So you'll notice that both um, TikTok and Instagram are trending downwards in terms of engagement rates, but Shorts is on the up. So um, I wouldn't be too disheartened if like, you've started to do YouTube Shorts, you're not getting the incredible reach in terms of like, view counts that you might be getting on TikTok. It might be something worthwhile persisting with. Anyone here doing YouTube Shorts on YouTube at all? Cool. Trying. Cool, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I hear that. Cool, <laughs> nice. Um, all right, again, I, I caveat this because like, when's the best time to post? The, this best time to post conversation comes up all the darn time. And what I'm about to show you, use this maybe some guidelines, but honestly defer to your own intelligence about this because the, the, the flaw with this data, and we struggle with this, if I'm being completely honest, being a technology company around this. Because if, more, if everyone posts at the same time, that becomes the best time to post, right? It's very hard to, to give some real balanced arguments around this. Joe, I've seen you post quite a lot of weekends as well, of which weekends, when you look at this kind of data, is a no-no. But in fact, there's lower competition. Yeah, typical guidance is mornings work the best. If you're looking across the board, and this is global data, so yeah, just normalized to our, to our local time. Mornings work the best. Uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, so in the middle of the week between nine and 11, pretty much is your kind of rule of thumb across all of, all of the networks. The only outlier here is TikTok, where TikTok content works better in the evening. That's the only outlier. So once again, like it could be quite useful. Maybe that'll give you some insights to, to try something a little bit different. But from my own personal experience, the more you can experiment with the timing of your posts, the better your data will get. How many hashtags should you use? Um, the answer to this question is as little as possible. So um, all of the networks seem to be on a mission right now to discourage the use of hashtags. I don't know what that's all about, to be honest. Um, so, so I kind of deferred some data that Hootsuite did. They, they did their, some tests with their own accounts. So they looked at posts with three to five hashtags. 
this is on Instagram, by the way, uh, and then reached a post with 30 hashtags, they actually saw posts with 30 hashtags diminished in reach compared to ones to three to five. I've seen that in other data too, that fewer hashtags end up being a little bit better. Um, and obviously Adam Mazzeri, if anyone follows him on Instagram, so head of Instagram, he's come out and said, hashtags will not significantly change your reach. Twitter also put out something earlier this week that said, hashtags do not impact your reach. But uh, to be honest, it'll take everything Twitter says with a pinch of salt. Right? <laughs> um, so yeah, basically the story here is that don't sweat it. You know, use three, five maybe, but it's not a, gonna be a game changer for your content. Focus on the content first. People over obsess uh, over hashtags is not going to make a massive impact to your content. Ha good, well chosen hashtags won't save bad content. So um, just, we don't need to sweat it, which is the main message here. But this tool is really useful and entirely free. I, honestly, I've only found this recently. I thought it was really useful <clears throat> for finding relevant hashtags with the amount of views across both Instagram and um, and Twitter. So it's just a nice simple tool and it's entirely free to use. So it's called right tag. On to the final bit, social media metrics. So here we looked at some macro shifts, what's happening in the world of social. And actually, you know, when you pick underneath it, um, there are some underlying principles that, that really don't change. That can kind of guide us in a, in a kind of sensible and logical direction. We also looked at a few other data points as well, which we could potentially use to imp impact our strategy. Platforms for reach and engagement, best time to post, hashtag, yada, yada. So then how do we interpret the success of content? And I'm only gonna show two things in the kind of final part here, because I'm not a big fan of analyzing to the nth degree. In fact, we've all got better things to do with our time than spend hours in spreadsheets and analyzing things. And honestly, sometimes um, from what I've seen over years of doing this stuff, is that social media folks sometimes do themselves a disservice by going too far into the weeds on content. Like, oh, this, this got this many engagement, this many likes, etc. There's actually a more sensible way and a simpler way we can look at things. And we can look at it through two lenses. Firstly, this is a way, a rule, to help you understand the performance at a content level. So I call it social media success happens here. So we looked at our impression rate earlier. So that was one of the, um, the stats I showed you earlier from my own example. So impression rate is simply the amount of people that see our content, so overall views or impressions, um, divided by your number of followers. Simple as that. So out of your number of followers, how many people are seeing it? And if that number is over 100%, you know you are reaching beyond your follower base, as was the case when we were showing you um, that Facebook example, right? So that helps you understand, are you extending your reach? Are you going beyond your current audience? So ticking this box means, great, we're maximizing our distribution. We started this talk with talking about distribution, maximizing mental availability, the one who gets remembered, gets bought, yada, yada, word of mouth, yada, yada, all of that stuff. So uh, that's impression rate, ticking that box. And then engagement rate, we've spoken about this already, which is simply the amount of interactions we've had on our content divided by our number of followers. And for the content, and I don't look at every single post like this, but at the end of a month, I'll look at things that kind of hit the middle of this then. The things that have said, okay, well on these platforms or this particular content, and be very inquisitive about it, like what time, what platform, what format, yada, yada. What were the things that drove reach beyond our followers? So that gave us that, that kind of exposure that we needed. But what was the thing that, that drove engagement? Because, you know, what I'm not interested in is having things like, you know, that Facebook example where it's 220% impression rate, but had very little engagement. It just means that Facebook is just chucking it out willy nilly, right? And that's no good, that's no good for anyone. So where you hit the middle of the Venn, where you start to see lots of engagement. So TikTok was a really good example of that and LinkedIn content is really good because the engagement always seems to be really, really strong. And when you look at content like that, which means great, I'm getting distribution, I'm going far, I'm building awareness, I'm ultimately doing what, we, what social media is incredibly powerful to maximize underpriced attention. And yet I'm clearly meeting the needs and, and getting engagement from my target audience. And again, it becomes like a virtuous circle because the more engagement, the more reach you get. And when you're getting engagement, it means you're hitting the right audience. So simple as that. That is my simple model for evaluating whether content's good or not. I'm not looking at any of the other more specific metrics 
just that's the kind of the formula I use to evaluate content. Now, more importantly than that, I would get rid of every single metric I've spoken about. And you'll notice that I've only spoken about three metrics today. I've spoken about views. I've spoken about engagement. Oh no, two so far. And I'm about to speak about the third one. But the other two could be thrown in the bin if it was just for this one. Um, and if you work in PR, you would, what I'm about to say, you'd be like, yeah, obviously, you know, yeah. Um, tell us something new or exciting. But honestly, we, especially in B2B, do not use this. And I've spoken about this for years now, and I'm still gobsmacked by the amount of people that are like, oh, I've never heard of that. Because it is the bit that interlinks all of your social media and marketing activity to a business strategy. I started this talk by talking about social media is not a channel, it's a, it is a business strategy. And the way we talk about it is through share of voice. You know it, so I don't need to explain it to you. Um, but I think we all could do ourselves a service as, as marketers to truly help, especially like CEOs and some CMOs don't even get this, where you know, if we want to change cultures in, in business to either give us more budget to help us truly understand the incredible impact that marketing has on an organization, all I do is talk about this single slide. This is the kind of culture change slide as far as I'm concerned, because Share a voice simply is the amount of times that you're mentioned as part, your brand name is mentioned um, as part of a broader conversation, right? So you can look at yourself compared to your competitors. So I looked at this, I don't look at this every day. This was something I would do every quarter. I would look at the amount of times like Hootsuite and Buffer and all the others that we are up against were mentioned in comparison to us. Also knew our market share in comparison to them. So here we are, market share. So that helps us, you know, we're talking a language of business. What is our market share? What is the share of the voice? And simply put, if, the share of, if our share of voice is bigger than our market share, so we've got 10% share of voice and our market share is 5%, our brand will grow. As easy as that. That is the simple kind of linear trajectory that we see. And if like, you know, Mark Ritson will talk about this, you'll see this in all of like the standard like marketing stuff. But we just, it's typically spoken about in B2C, not enough in B2B. Because if, if we focus on having a bigger share of voice than our competitors, our brand will grow. If it's less, our brand will shrink. As, as simple as that. It goes back to that number one rule of those kind of six golden rules that we started with. Our job is to light a fire under word of mouth. The more people we get talking about us, the more we maximize mental availability, the more we create virality, and the more we build word of mouth because num the number one underlying emotion that governs all buyer behavior is trust. And how do we engineer trust at scale? It's by getting more people to talk about you. So that is the simple way of presenting the broader impact that social media has. And I'm, I, as you can probably tell, I'm super passionate about this because when we go too far in the weeds, if we zoom in too close, we do not see the transformative impact of not just social, but content marketing at scale. When we zoom out, get a broader perspective, think about what it means from, the, from a broader business landscape perspective, we start to see the true impact that social media or content marketing has on a business at scale. And you know, I'm passionate about it because I've seen it play out and seen it go from, from nothing into, into something fairly sizable. Anyway, so I've written a book, but anyway, connect with me and I, <laughs> we'll, we'll chat. Um, but thank you very much. We'll do some questions.